Hello, my name is Alan, and this clickbait for this video is entirely accurate. This is the Ovella set I have, and I'm going to do a five speed conversion on the gearbox. Uh, it's going to be on a set of casings that I have on the bench. Uh, I got a lot of stuff through Nick Payton. The Quaif conversion kit is coming through Grow Classics. As you can see, I'm wearing the COVID-19 hairstyle. I haven't been to the barbers in months. And the virus has also taken its toll on the people at Quaif who are a little bit behind in their delivery now. Anyway, the gearbox I'm going to build will be on the bench. And then once I'm happy with it, then I'll take this old thing apart and install it. I forgot to turn the camera on, so you didn't actually receive me doing a survey of all the various bearings. Last shot was of me clean, declaring that I was going to clean all these up. I've done that. It's been, uh, they've come up very nicely. I've measured up all of the holes in the gearbox casings where I need to insert bearings or bushes and all of them are slightly undersized compared to the item that has to be inserted. So there's going to be an interference fit everywhere. So I'm very happy about that. The next little task will be to make a three pin socket wrench up so that I can drive this retainer in for the uh, for the main shaft output bearing. Uh, in the past, I must confess, I've taken a punch and a hammer to this and driven it around. But this is going to be the ultimate gearbox build and I'm going to do everything properly and take the time. So I'm going to make myself up a little bit of uh, of a, a socket, three pin socket wrench, which I'll have to turn up on the lathe. And indeed, I can show you some shots of that. Well, here we are at the lathe. I'm just going to turn on. I've checked all the oil and everything. As you can, as you can see, this is a very large lump of material for such a small lathe. So the intention here is just to run the lathe very gently and slowly. Uh, this is a piece of 316. It was the only lump that I had of a convenient size. And uh, of course the problem with things like this is actually cutting it off when you're finished doing whatever you have to do. There's quite a lot of parting off involved. It just gives you an idea of progress. A bit of smoke now imminent. Yes, there it goes. Now the cutting oil is getting very hot. That new tip is cutting nicely and slowly but surely I'm reducing this to a sensible dimension. It's just slow going. Milestone here, I've managed to machine all that away and it will just go on nicely. So now I have to cut this off, enable me to probably weld or nut or a hex head on the end of it and then I can screw this in and I can insert some pins into this shoulder which will engage in, engage in these three slots. So, slow steady progress on a big lump of stainless steel on my tiny little Mifert. Alright, I'm just going to engage back gear because I intend to turn this very slowly and then allow a tap to draw itself in. So the first thing you do is undo that. That then releases this and then you bring this gear up. So now we're in dead slow. That's it. So now I'm just going to bring this up. I'm not going to lock the tailstock. I'm just going to encourage this to engage. There it goes. Right, I thought I would just share with you the final tool. Uh, this is it here. Uh, I put a tap through that and an M12 bolt and uh, this now fits very nicely. Let me just put the camera down. As you can see there's uh, three pins, there are M3 bolts drilled and tapped and uh, that's now going to enable me to screw this in here. And, uh, Anyway, that's going to work out nicely. Let me just run you around some of the furniture that uh, is used. These are the selector forks, rods. This is the clutch actuation. This is the part that goes up and down. This is the little push rod that comes through and bears on the other side of this, which is the, uh, the lift plate for the clutch. Down here, there's a spherical bearing. This is the other side of it that sits in there. And then as this thing moves ever so slightly, uh, it lifts the clutch. 
this is the fulcrum for this part and these are the shims which mean that it can be uh, positioned in such a way that it has the right lift at half an inch pretty well parallel to the gearbox surface and then the rest of the lift tilts it a little bit more so setting all this up is essential this is the striker plate and the pole this is the device where's it gone this is the device here which centralizes this it's got a very strong spring and as this part here rocks to and fro these surfaces bear on that and centralize that again and this is the detente mechanism that goes on the bottom of the uh, the bottom of the, se the selector plate and confirms the position for every gear uh, this is the oil thrower that goes on the sleeve gear and uh, I think that's probably enough this is the oh yes this is the Kickstarter hub I was I noticed one of these holes seemed to be blocked so I got a punch and drove it drove the obstruction out and what did I find a little piece of drill Poss possibly a piece of debris from when it was manufactured all those years ago I think it may have broken off in the Velocet factory and uh, nobody worried too much about it these holes here are simply to let oil and gas in and out because this thing has to move in and out as it functions and rotates when it's driven by the Kickstarter these are the holes that the pins go through which is there which maintain the thrust on the, the lay shaft as this goes in and out so there's quite a lot of measuring and setting up to do uh, there's I'm going to I'm going to stick a seal on the outside of that uh, which is something I've done on the current machine and that eliminates any chance of oil leaks there so those are all the bits and pieces this this here is uh, not very good. The linkage for the gear change, uh, there's a rivet there which is very loose. I don't like the look of that really. So I'm thinking of man grinding out these rivets and installing some M5 uh, rose joints. And uh, I can turn up a spacer there and thread it so that in fact uh, I can adjust it. And uh, these will probably be a little bit better than these rattly old rivets and so on. So all in all, there's lots of scope for me to indulge myself and uh, end up with a, a nice job at the end of it all. So I think that's probably enough now. That shows you all the furniture and the debris and the bits and pieces that has to be piled into the gearbox. And uh, this, of course, is the this is the the little tool that I've been working on. So once I get uh, myself sorted out. I shall heat this up and install the bearing and uh, then you'll see this in operation. This is the end of the first video. I hope you found it of interest. Uh, I'm going to produce another video which will be when I start fitting all the various bits and pieces to the gearbox. Unfortunately I won't be able to go much further than that until Quaif deliver all of the bits and pieces and indeed the 5-speed conversion. So I hope you join me for the second video. And uh, if you haven't enjoyed it, sure there's no, there's no harm done. Because I am, after all, just a man in a shed talking to himself as usual. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.